Question six from this week's homework says that the displacement of a wave traveling in the positive x direction is y of x comma t is equal to 3.5 centimeters times cosine of 2.7x minus 92t, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. What are the a frequency, b wavelength, and c speed of the wave? So let's write out our equation. So we have 3.5 centimeters cosine 2.7 x and then minus 92 t. And this is our y as a function of x and t. To determine our wavelength and our frequency, we're going to compare this to the generic equation that the textbook gives us. So on page 526 of the textbook, they say that our displacement, y is a function of x and t. Um, you'll notice I swapped them here. That was just kind of accidental. It doesn't matter which order you write them in. But it means the same thing. So if you see y of t comma x of y or y of x comma t, those are you can use those interchangeably. And this is equal to a cosine of, and they have it written as 2 pi times x over lambda minus t over t. And this one is for a wave that's moving to the right or in the positive direction. So the same scenario as what we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2 pi because we don't have a 2 pi factored out here. And when I was grading the homework, that was a mistake that I noticed people did very frequently, is they kind of forgot about the 2 pi thing, and so they just tried saying, oh, well, this is 1 over lambda. But we have to remember this, the 2 pi here. So to make our comparison a little bit clearer, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the 2 pi to both terms. Rearrange things a little bit. So we're going to have y as a function of x and t is equal to a cosine 2 pi over lambda times x minus 2 pi over our period times t. So if we look at the coefficient in front of x in this expression, and in this expression, we know those have to be the same thing. So this means that 2.7 is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So if we want to know what lambda is, we're going to multiply both sides by lambda, divide by 2.7, and this tells us that lambda is equal to 2 pi over 2.7, which works out to be about 2.7. 3, 3 meters. Now I only have two sig figs here, so we're going to ultimately round this to about 2.3 meters. To find our frequency, we have kind of one extra intermediary step. So recall that frequency is 1 over the period. So if we look at stuff that involves period, we can use that information to solve for our frequency. So we're going to kind of play kind of the same matching game we did before, except this time we're going to look at the coefficient in front of the time piece. So we have 2 pi over t is equal to 92. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we know 2 pi over our period is equal to 92. Now, this is the same thing as 2 pi times 1 over our period. And 
and 1 over r period is just our frequency, so this is 2 pi f. So if you want our frequency, we're just going to divide both sides by 2 pi, and we're going to get the frequency is equal to 92 divided by 2 pi. And this works out to be about 14.6 hertz, or to 2 sig figs, 15 hertz. Now the last thing this question asks for is the wave speed. And so to find this, we just have to recall that our speed is equal to our wavelength times our frequency. And we just figured out what our wavelength and our frequency are, so to find the speed, we just have to plug those numbers in. So we're going to have V is equal to our wavelength, we said was about 2.33 meters. And our frequency was about 14.6 hertz. So we're going to multiply these together. And we will get that the wave speed is about 34 meters per second. Now where do the units of meters per second come from? Well remember that hertz is 1 over second, so we have meters here. We have 1 over seconds here, so our final answer to 2 sig figs would be 34 meters per second.